Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Ani. So before I begin, I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe peoples, the Robinson-Huron Treaty, traditionally shared by the people of Atikmishé and Anishinaabe, Wanbate First Nation, and Sagamok Anishinaabe. I want to begin by welcoming you all here today for this event and extend a big thank you to Premier Ford for being here with us again in Greater Sudbury. It's always a privilege to have the Premier visit, but today's occasion is particularly special. And I'm looking forward to the exciting news that's about to be shared. I also would like to acknowledge all of the other dignitaries. I see a lot of my councillors that are here. Thanks for being here. Our partners and residents who have come to be part of this important announcement. Premier, on behalf of the City of Greater Sudbury, thank you for your ongoing support. We deeply appreciate the province's partnership, which is key to building a strong, sustainable future for our community. I know everyone here is eager to hear what's coming next, so I'll turn things over to you. Mr. Premier, it's over to you. Thank you. That's great. Well, Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be back here in beautiful Sudbury. And I remember the mayor and I were talking last time I was here. There was sleet, there was snow. I almost froze to death, but today's like a sunny, beautiful day. So before I get started, I, I want to acknowledge and welcome uh, Mayor Lefebvre and all the councillors and city staff. You know, Mayor, I always say, you know, one of the toughest jobs is yours and especially the city councillors and the staff is right on the doorstep. And uh, you, you hear it uh, from the people, as well as the local home builders and business leaders joining us today. And a big thank you to everyone from the Walden Wastewater Treatment Plant for hosting us here. Facilities like this one are so important to our, all, to our communities right across the province. And I want to thank all the workers here. Without the hardworking folks, this wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't happen day in and day out. People underestimate how important wastewater is until they don't have it. For the important work that you do every single day to provide people and businesses with clean water and ensure wastewater is treated properly and thank you for that. Friends, here in Greater Sudbury and across the province, we need to build more homes and we know that building housing, enabling infrastructure like roads and bridges and maintaining and expanding wastewater facilities like this one is critical to getting those homes built faster. That's why last year we introduced the Building Faster Fund, a $1.2 billion fund that rewards municipalities for meeting their housing targets. And I'm so proud to say that back in April, the city of Greater Sudbury received $1.5 million from that fund that it can use immediately for housing enabling projects. In our most recent budget, we announced an additional $1.2 billion in funding for our housing enabling water system fund to help local governments repair, rehabilitate, and expand local water infrastructure systems. In August, we announced that the first round of investments from this fund, a total of 970 million, will help build approximately 500,000 homes across 60 municipalities. And today, I am thrilled to share that this first round of funding includes up to $34.9 million for the city of Greater Sudbury to help expand the wastewater system and water mains. Awesome. I don't know why they just didn't round it off rather than 0.9, give you another 100,000. Well, I'm not the one who does the formulas, but uh, it's, it's a big number. So this investment will help upgrade components of the lively Walden wastewater system, including lift station and water collection system improvements and the expansion of the Walden wastewater treatment plant. It will help kickstart construction projects, boost the local economy and help build over 3,300 homes in Greater Sudbury. And Mayor, we're going to keep working with you, with council, not just to build more homes, but to make sure Sudbury has the infrastructure it needs Unlike previous governments that didn't plan for the future, we've embarked on the largest capital expansion the country's ever seen. We're investing nearly $100 billion to improve and expand transportation infrastructure across the province. 
This includes the widening of Highway 69, and I've been all over them on Highway 69. We'll get into that in the question period here. In education, we're investing $16 billion to build, repair, and expand schools, including LaSalle Elementary School here in Sudbury. We're making record investments in healthcare, including adding hundreds of new hospital beds in the region since 2018. And in a $108 million investment to expand Orange's Air Am Ambulance fleet, ensuring people, especially those living in rural and remote communities, can connect to quality, urgent care when they need it. Friends, we're building the homes, the hospitals, the schools, roads and highways, and other critical infrastructure Sudbury needs to attract investments and new jobs and to support the region's population growth. We're building the infrastructure that Sudbury needs to reach its full potential. I want to thank you again for everyone joining us today, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now go to reporters' questions. Reporters, please line up at the mic behind me. Please state your name and outlet. It will be one question and one follow-up. First reporter. Hello, Mr. Ford. Um, I have a question about the annual Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund dollar cap of $10 million that yes. has been placed on the city of Greater Sudbury. If not for that, the city would have received more money, and the criticism of that is that pre-amalgamation, the, there are more municipalities... Uh, uh, Anyway, is this on the province's radar, or lifting this cap? Well, I'll tell you, we put out $400 million, and you spread $400 million to 444 municipalities, and everyone wants a slice of the pie. Um, any, any jurisdiction over 100000 is capped at $10 million, but the good news is, is $10 million is a big number still. And then we have to take care of all the other smaller municipalities as, as well. But maybe next time we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, but that's, that's a big chunk of, chunk of change, the $400 million plus the $10 million. But everyone needs, uh, you know, community upgrades and, and hockey arenas. And I'm, I'm, I'm big on that. So we'll, we'll continue looking at that. But the good news is Sudbury is going to get $10 million. Uh, and um, in the last election, uh, we didn't hear much from the local progressive conservative candidates. Uh, they avoided all media interviews, and after the election, we learned that it was a top-down directive not to grant those media interviews. Do you have a means of addressing transparency in the next provincial election, whenever that might be called? Well, you know something? We're focused on getting the province moving forward right now. That's the last thing on my mind, to be very frank with you. Uh, we have a lot of infrastructure being put in across the, the province. We're making sure that we're making things more affordable. We announced the the gas tax uh, cut yesterday. Everyone up here drives. Uh, that think, think of that. Every time you pump your gas, you're paying almost 11 cents less that we've cut the tax and putting more money into people's pockets. You know, people are finding it tough right now out there. And, you know, unlike other governments that all they believe, the Liberals and NDP, is the tax, tax, tax. We've never raised a tax in our entire lives. We've reduced the taxes, no matter if it's a uh, license sticker tax or the 11 cent, almost 11 cents, 10.7 cents a liter. We're going to continue looking at ways to put money into people's pockets to make life a little easier than uh, what it is. But we're, we're fortunate right now. We're living in Ontario compared to other jurisdictions around the country, North America. Uh, they're finding it pretty tough, but we're going to look at economic development. Just think of this. Previous government, folks, six years ago, chased 300,000 jobs of the province. They were anti-mining, anti-forestry, anti-anything up here, and uh, we're the total opposite. Uh, there's 860,000 more people working today than there was six years ago, and that's big numbers, and we're going to pump more money into the mining sector to support the people of Sudbury and give them a, a better job and a bigger paycheck. Hello, Mr. Ford. Heidi Hi. Ulrichson uh, with Sudbury.com, which is a village media outlet. Nice uh, to meet you. Okay. Laurentian University here in Sudbury exited insolvency nearly two years ago now, yeah. yet its creditors have yet to be paid out. The money to do this is to come from sales of land to the province of Ontario. The deadline is around a year from now, on November 28, 2025. Why is this process taking so long, and how much longer will it take? 
Well, let me tell you the good news. Uh, Laurentian, they had problems, but uh, they had a surplus. They just announced a $37 million. So we're getting them back on their feet. They're moving forward. They're restructuring through the insolvency. It's in front of the courts still right now, and uh, we'll do everything we can to, to support them. But the good news is, went from bankrupt into $37 million surplus, a little over $37 million. So that's good news. How much longer will this take, um, the land sales to the province? Well, I'll have to look into it. I don't have the exact date, but uh, we're going to continue supporting Laurentian to get them moving forward, back on their feet, and uh, running a, a, a prudently fiscal uh, university. Let's, let's say that. Because before, they weren't prudent fiscal managers. Now, they're, they're coming out of it, and we're going to make sure we stay on that. Hello, Premier Ford. I'm Amanda Hicks Hi. from CTV North. Hi, Amanda. And um, you actually kind of touched on my question already. I was going to ask about Highway 69 yep. and the timeline for completion for that. Okay, so Highway 69, I've been all over them like an 800-pound gorilla on this one. They finished 84 kilometers so far. They have 68 kilometers more to go. It's in the engineering stages right now and consultation with three First Nations community because we have to acquire their land and uh, I'll get you the exact date on how it's going but I just asked uh, the First Nations community uh, let's go let's move because it's going to support your community like every other community in the area so we're in the midst of acquiring land off from right now and through consultation but the engineering is happening I told them do not stop speed it up uh, because I can't wait to get the the balance of the 60 I think it's about 68 kilometers left on 69. It's critical. It's critical for safety and transportation, everything else. So I'm, I'm pushing it. Okay, and um, just switching gears a little bit here, yeah. we have Nossum University up here, uh, a doctor shortage here, as, as well as you know m much across Canada here. Um, you recently introduced the legislation putting a cap on international med, med students. That's a good um, thing. And I'm just wondering how uh, you think, do, if you think that that's going to help attract more, a doc more doctors to Northern Ontario, which is what we need. Nossum's an amazing uh, medical school, by the way. Since they've been open, they've uh, graduated over 900 doctors, and we found out that half of them have stayed here in the north, which is fabulous. We believe if you get educated in the north, there's a good chance you're going to stay here. We increased the, the undergrad seats, I think it's by 44 seats, and the postgrads by 62 seats. And now we've elim eliminated roughly, it was 18, 20% of foreign students coming in with lots of money, paying for the seats, taking the seats from our Ontario students. Unacceptable. That's done. That's gone. That's not happening any longer. So we have 100% of these seats in, in Ontario are going to be Canadian kids, but 95% of that 100 have to be in Ontario. So we're giving the rest of Canada five seats, which is probably a good thing. And uh, we also have uh, Dr. Jane Philpot out there. She's going to be focused on making sure we connect the people with the doctors. You know, they come out with this stat the other day. We're leading the country in connections with, with docs and, and residents, people of Ontario. What's the number, I ask them? It's 88%. I said, that's ridiculous. 88 is not good. We have to hit 100% of the people uh, being connected with, with docs. And uh, we're pouring money into it. We have an excellent person to do it. So uh, we'll, fill, we'll fill that gap because as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, it, it's, not, uh, it's not acceptable. Um, what else we're doing here? So if the students in medical school in the north or anywhere in Ontario, if they are willing to agree to work as a family doctor, uh, wherever they are, be it the north, let's say, we'll pay for five years of medical school, which is big money. We'll pay for their books. We'll pay for everything as long as they serve in uh, an area that docs are, are needed, and that's pretty well everywhere in Ontario. My rationale, they're up here for five years. Hopefully they're going to meet someone, and they're living here. So if you see a single doc come up here, just set him or her up, 
as quickly as possible, lay down the roots, and then we get to keep them. You gotta be strategic in these things. So anyways, we're gonna pay for all their books. We're getting Dr. Jane uh, Philpott. We're adding a tremendous more medical seats and uh, we're going full, full steam. We're, we're growing faster than anywhere in North America, faster than you know, up in Texas and Florida. They always brag about faster growing. We had, we had 800,000 people show up to our province last year. You know, I, I, I love having people here, but we gotta play catch up now. And I told the federal government, we need to start continue building the infrastructure, building the homes, building the schools and the hospitals, but they need, they need to slow down a little bit. Um, you know, that's, that's what they need to do on, on that. This will be the last question. Rajput Sahoda, CBC. Um, we've been hearing a lot from you from for the past couple of weeks, uh, from the tunnel under 401 to bike lanes. Is there any thought of an early election? Well, I know one thing. I'm focusing on Ontario, and uh, there's not going to be any alert early election uh, this year. But my main focus is making sure that we help people because right now people people are hurting out there create more jobs better jobs as i said and bigger paychecks have a strong economy with a strong economy we get to go out there and build more roads highways infrastructure put money into hospitals which we're doing we're spending we're spending a, a fortune 50 billion with a b 50 billion uh, dollars on 50 projects around Ontario, either getting a new hospital or in addition to a hospital, and uh, building new schools. That's what we need to do. That's my number one focus. And uh, that's it. Is there any other? Thank you. I got to leave it with this. I can't help myself. Folks, we need a voice uh, down at Queen's Park for Sudbury because the guy you have down there is sitting in the corner playing cards. He is not voicing. Uh, the concerns of the people of Sudbury. I feel like you're, you're uh, you know, you're, you're a person that's voicing all your concerns in Ontario. I'm just asking, think long and hard. Uh, we need a representative be sitting at the table, jumping up and down about Sudbury. So we'll look at that uh, in the next election. I appreciate everything you do up here. I'll always have your backs. You call me directly if you need help. We have the mayor, a phenomenal mayor, by the way. What are you doing in the next couple of years, mayor? <laughs> I can't help myself, but it's true. You need a voice. Look what happened to Thunder Bay. Look what happened to Timmins when they flipped. 110 visits up in Thunder Bay from ministers. It says it all. But anyways, folks, thank you. I love the people of Sudbury. They're salt of the earth, honest, hardworking people. And I'll be your voice until we get a better color down there a blue a pc blue and uh, we'll keep pushing for uh, the people of sudbury thank you